Hi everybody. <clears throat> oh my god, my morning voice. Happy Saturday morning. Um, sorry I didn't record last night. I <laughs> had a crazy Friday night, but it was good. Um, I wrote a lot and I got sucked into this new show called Dirty John. <laughs> I think that's what it is on Netflix. It's about like real life, well based on real life murders and sketchy situations and before I knew it it was like three o'clock in the morning I was like oh my god I have to get to bed <laughs> this show is so good so I'm definitely I have some errands to run after this but I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do a bunch of readings I might even do a pick a pile today because I just feel bad and you know I have the house to myself and I really want to take advantage of my first day off but it was also a long week and I was very sick with these medicines so I just kind of lounged got sucked into <laughs> Netflix <laughs> it happens from time to time I don't really watch much TV but when I get into it I get into it sometimes all right let's start with our Mary Kay I use anti-age because I'm older now, but you don't have to get anti-age. You can just get plain face moisturizer from Mary Kay. I like their products a lot, but there's a bunch of stuff out on the market, so just find what works for you. If you have more oily skin, I would look into um, lotions that deal with people with oily skins because I checked the other day. They do have um, specific face lotions for you guys um, so it doesn't make your condition worse and it helps prevent it from having those breakouts of woolly pimples which I get all around my mouth and like my cheekbones those are my pimple areas and my nose <laughs> sometimes I get a pimple like right on the edge of your lip Oh, I hate that so much. They hurt, especially when you gotta pop it. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> All right, so today, since we did the cat eye yesterday, I think I'm gonna show you for my hazel and green eyes um, a brown cat eye. Or if you, like I said, if you're wearing leopard, if you're in fall, or you just have a brown type of outfit on, this would work for any eye color. <laughs> it's not just with so specifically, there we go, it's early in the morning, <laughs> really sorry. Um, it's not specifically for brown and green eyes. It can go with clothes color too. If you're like wearing tans or taupes or ivories, this would work too. <laughs> um, all right, so we got our moisturizer on. I'm going to do a little tiny bit of primer. Where'd you go? Made by Wet n Wild Face Primer. Just because it, um, it's very windy today. And if there's moisture coming out, I want my makeup to stick through all these errands. <laughs> um, also, it's very windy. I think that was... Been the neighbor getting his stuff. He's got to come on our porch for mail. Anyway, it's really fucking windy out. My mom has a hundred wind chimes out there, and that's all I heard all night long. <laughs> she finds it relaxing, so I don't say nothing, but sometimes I'm just like, shh, wind chimes, just be quiet. There's too many of them. But sometimes, it's pretty too. Just depends on my mood, I guess. Today they're going crazy because it's freakishly warm out and it's wicked windy. So I'm like not really sure what the weather's gonna do today. Are we getting snow later? Are we getting rain? Are we gonna have a windstorm? Like what is the deal? You never know in Syracuse. Concealer stick by LA Colors. It's only like a dollar or two. Again, this isn't your foundation. This is just concealer. You put this under your foundation. So don't worry about the tint. <laughs> I'm still trying to use up all these crappy ones. <laughs> we'll see how long I can squeeze shit out of these for. Wait, not want that. I will even get a 
little rubber band and just start doing this until it's all the way up. I use every last drop. Listen, I'm a single lady. I don't have no sugar daddy and none of that, nor do I want one. So, I do shit my own way. I got It comes out of my own pocket. I think it makes you appreciate your shit more and take better care of your stuff. Not that I'm judging if you have a sugar daddy out there. Good for you, lady or man, sugar mama. Let's not discriminate. Whatever works for your relationship, just saying. I don't got one of those. I gotta buy my own shit, guys. And earn my own shit. Which <laughs> majority of us out there do, so I feel like you hear that's going on out there. Like, yeah, I feel you. I wish I had a sugar mama, sugar daddy, too. Like, I don't know how I would deal in that situation. I get, like, I don't know. I'm just fiercely independent. I like to take care of myself. <laughs> I got my own bag, god damn it. That's my attitude. But at the same time, it's like sometimes you're like, you know what? I wish someone else would just pick up the bag for a second so I could buy some new shoes. That goes both ways out there, I'm sure, with men and women. How many times do we spend all week working, earning paychecks, and we just want to, like, you know, get our hair did or buy a new outfit or get our nails done or go on a nice date, dinner, go to the casino, shoot some money. <laughs> Slots, but we can't because we have to pay our utility bill and take care and f put food on the table. It's like adulting sucks. Do you remember when you were like 16 and you had your first job and you really didn't have any? Well, I always had a bill because once we got a job, you know, we had to pay for our own pager bill or cell phone bill or like whatever we wanted for ourselves. If I wanted my nails done, if I had a, you know, first of all, my mom never just. She had five of us, so she never gave us money to get our nails professionally done. Only for, like, prom and, like, cotillions, she um, would take us to get our nails done for prom. My mom took the whole day off of work, which was a big, big deal back then because, you know, she always had to work. It was junior year. I don't know if you're from the United States, but most proms are in your junior year, which is the year before your last year of school. You actually have a junior prom and a senior prom, and they're both big events. But the junior prom is, like, the big one. It's, like, the first time you, like, dress up. It's, like, the equivalent to a girl's wedding. Like, you look forward to it. You go dress shopping. You pick out the shoes. You pick out your jewelry. It's, like, a big deal in my family. So my mom took the day off, and she took me to this really classy, it was like Liz Lanza's or something like that. I was just excited because that, like, she picked a place that had my name in it, which I thought was super cute. She's like, I found a place, a, a little salon, they'll do your hair and your makeup and your nails all in one spot, and it has your name in it. Let's do that. I was like, I don't know. It kind of sounds super expensive, Mom. She's like, yellow, pretty much. My mom's like, no, these are big moments. Like, I will put a payment on my credit card and pay it off for, like, four weeks for you to have a memorable, like, this is a big moment. It was a big moment for her. It was a big moment for my older sister. It was a big moment for my younger sisters after me. Like, my mom did this for all of us. Took the day off. And not just that day, but we also went dress shopping with my mom. My mom wanted to see us with our dress on. Like, we would go pick out a bunch. She'd give us a budget because, you know, we were a pretty poor family. So, you know, it's important to have a budget. She's like, I love you and all, and I want you to have a good day, but this is all, <laughs> all I can afford. So we were pretty good about that. We never really gave my mom a hard time because we knew how hard she worked. Anyway, I'm going to do a little eye primer this time because these colors are going to be a bit darker, like the black for the cat eye. So I always try to prime a little bit, which I'm actually running out of eye primer. Anyway, so she picks me up from school, and the, requir the requirement for prom is you have to attend... On the day of prom, you have to attend at least the first part of the day. And if you don't, you can't go. Like, they won't want you in the dance. Like, so if you're, like, sick that day, you got to suck it up for half a day and just get your ass there or else they won't let you in the dance. 
Anyway, they let us out for early release for these moments so we could go and get ready for the big event. And usually it's on like a Friday. Obviously, they're not going to do this in the middle of the week when we have school the next day. Some schools don't even have it on Fridays. They do it on Saturday, um, which I think is more helpful for the parents because then they're able to, like, maybe not have to use a personal day or they're just home. <laughs> There's more things open earlier, you know, less chaotic things. You don't have school all day. You can rest and just make it the main focus, and I wish my school did that. But my prom was actually on a Friday. So I had to get up, go to school, and <laughs> my school, I lived with my dad at this time, so I was in a new school. I don't, I don't know, I think that was my first year, yeah, my first year in Chittenango was junior year, so I left everybody I had grown up with, I was in this new school, and prom is at the end of the school year, um, like spring into summer, the last month or two of school, so you wait for this all year. Um, and now people are like really into it and they do like prom proposals which are like mini engagements it's like really making this into like little kids mini weddings <laughs> um, we didn't have prom proposals when I was going to school we just got asked normally like hey do you want to go to prom with me yes or no circle one <laughs> you know that was like not like a grand anyway in the first month of school I met uh, a boy and he was like the bad boy of the school and my soccer team was like no don't date him like he's into drugs and partying and he's a bad kid and technically speaking at the time they were right he was a bit of a juvenile delinquent and he did go to a boys home most of that year and we just wrote like old school letters and anyway you know I'm a fucking Virgo so you know you know Virgos you know always gotta gotta fix people complex and this is at this time like I was really sensitive about the outcasts and people who had a lot going on internally and just had this hard exterior because that's how I was so I saw a lot of myself in this boy we dated all year we ended up going to prom I lost my by choice fee badge to this person um uh, I don't regret any of it because we dated that whole year and it was like super intense. I don't know if you remember being that young, but like a year is a long fucking time. <laughs> like seeing each other every day, hanging out, you know, and I was a prudy pants. I didn't just like put out my cookies, you know what I mean? So I just felt like it was true love. We were writing letters. So prom was like even bigger for me because I actually like was really into my date. Um, my family was very against um, the person I was seeing, but at this point they realized that I was just going to do what I was going to do, and he had already gotten out of the boys' home and did his time and was doing better, and he came over to my dad's for dinner, which went horribly because me and my dad were fighting the whole time because I just thought he was, like, being judgy <laughs> to uh, the person I was dating. I'm like, you, you're not giving him a chance. You just see a bad kid. And, like, anyway, I was just fighting with my dad at that time anyway because I was forced to live there and move away from my siblings, my family. It was not a good time. I was a bratty, snotty little shit teenager, and I admit it. <laughs> I gave my stepmom and my dad and my mother a lot of shit. Hence why I, my mom was just like, you're going to live with your father. I can't tell anymore. So I was fighting with um, my sister's father, um, my stepdad. <laughs> we ended up making up and getting along good. But during that time, like, I was just fighting with him all the time. The cops got called. It was like a whole situation. And finally, my mom pretty much said, like, I have two little kids with this person. So you have to go live with your dad. And I was like, the betrayal by my own mother. Like, <laughs> it's a vengeful little shit. <laughs> totally my doing, by the way. Because I was a brat. And I just, I didn't like how he treated my mom or my sisters. He had a little bit of a drinking problem. So when he was sober, he was one person. And when he was drunk, he was completely different. Everybody who knew him, rest in peace, um, he passed away, knew the truth of that. Like, that's alcoholism for you. Like, they're not angels when they, 
get deep into that shit and then you know they wake up and they're remorseful and as a teenager I don't think you really understand addiction you just kind of see the chaos of it so I was very spiteful so prom was even bigger moment for me and my mom because we had been in therapy all year and like I like pretty much was like you dropped me off at my dad's and just left me here <laughs> abandonment issues times 25 so for us to have the whole day together it was nice she picked me up from school and um we went and got something to eat and then we went and got my nails done again this is all in the same building they're just like different areas so got our nails done first and my mom didn't get like fake nails put on but she got a mani pedi with me it was like mom daughter day and then she went with me to get my hair uh, styled and curled. Like we were just talking, getting along all day, which was rare at the time. Um, talking about the things that were going to happen that night. Like, are you going to dance? You know, don't forget your, to get your picture done. Do you have money for the pictures? You know how much it costs? Do you have your, like, just being a mom. And like, this is what happens if you, you know, need help, you can call me. <laughs> a lot of people have sex drugs, you try to slip that talk in there. So it's a little bit awkward with someone trying to do your hair and your mom's like, you know, I know you're 16 now and you have urges. And I'm just like, mom, my mom's a hippie, so she's under no impression that we're not thinking about it. And she's just what, had an open dialogue and she just... She knew we were uncomfortable, but she would keep asking questions. She didn't give a fuck. <laughs> like, she's not embarrassed about it, but we were. I was, like, mortified. I'm like, Mom, I'm not going to, even though I did. <laughs> but, you know, I, I could have told my mom, and she still would have let me go, and it wouldn't have been a big deal, but I didn't want to. I was just mortified. I couldn't. We talk about that shit now, but not, not when I was a kid. And I'm still, like, sometimes she'll talk to me, not, like, full-blown, like, she knows she's my mom. It's not like she gets into details. She'll be like, you know, I need some time, you know, with my boyfriend. I have urges, too. I'm like, okay, okay mom, you know, I will go out somewhere. Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> Would you want your mother to type? But at the same time, it just shows that we're closer. We're friends now. I'm older. Anyway, back to prep. Hair done. Nails. Did the makeup. And then um, she dropped me off at my dad's and was just kind of hanging out, helping me get ready because she wanted to be there when um, my date got there and took pictures. And my, you know, stepmom and my mom are pretty good friends pretty cool there was never any problem if anything you know Bonnie got my dad to straighten up and <laughs> you know put his wild oats away Bonnie's a good lady um they're just there was just never any real beef between my mom and Bonnie so like they could like stand in the kitchen and talk and it wasn't weird <laughs> I'm sure it was weird for my dad but not for those two they still you know at events, they see each other, she'll be like, hey, Bonnie, hey, Joe, how are you? Good, good, how are you? <laughs> you know, they're not like, oh, fucked up. Still had black on it from yesterday. So we're all there getting ready, and of course, my prom date was super late. But, you know, it's not like... They're just being disrespectful, you know. They uh, had the other prom dates with us. We all rode together. So they, of course, he had to wait for the other boy and girl to do pictures of their family. And then his family wanted photos. And um, they came to me last because I was out in the sticks, like I said. Oh, by the way, I never finished the story. I had to get up mad early because my bus ride to school was about an hour long. That's how in the sticks I was away from my school. Uh, and I was furious because the school I, with all my friends and where I grew up, 
I was one driveway over from the edge of the school district, so I literally could have crossed the street and stood in someone else's driveway and continued my, you know, with my friends. One second. Just my friends, but, like, my soccer team that I had played with for years. Like, I left everything behind. And the school district goes by your address. And since my mom and my dad thought changing schools would get me, um away from people they thought were bad influences, which really no one was a bad influence. I just had a lot of rage. <laughs> I just was like raging against the machine for other shit that happened in my life. And my parents, you know, they didn't know anything about the trauma I had. So they're like, what the fuck? It happened to my sweet daughter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was the sweet one. And then I turned into like Satan. <laughs> the teen years were a little bit but like I said something happened I kept my mouth shut and it changes your personality especially as a kid so these I'm just painting the picture this time I was not a happy camper my parents like went through some shit I ran away that year and I was missing for like two weeks I'm sure it was like super scary and I didn't even care that I was worrying my parents I was in the yard every night. I just hid and I would wait for them to go to work because my stepmom wasn't doing daycare yet. Once they were at work, I would just go in, take a shower, get what I needed for the day and leave again. And people were covering for me and, you know, the police were looking for me. <laughs> it's pretty much like <laughs> early Amber alert. Like, have you seen this teen girl? I was definitely that girl. But little did anyone know I was literally in the yard every single night all right so this palette we're using wet and wild i use this on the top now we are going to go hmm. this color or the crease. <laughs> anyway, so I had to get up mad early because my bus ride is like an hour fucking long. Which I would either do my homework or just continue to sleep <laughs> since I had, I got up before it was light out. By the way, I got on my bus and it was still not light out. I got to school and it was just getting light out because the school started mad early. It started like two hours earlier than the school I was used to. So I was like, what the fuck? But we also got out mad early in the afternoon, which was better for sports because we got longer practices. Other schools wouldn't get out till like 3, so our games were between like 4.30 and 5 o'clock. Anyway, and our school got out at 2.15. And they made us do a 45-minute sports study hall, whether you needed it or not, because that school insisted that we have time to do our homework, which ESM didn't always do, which that was one thing as a kid I hated. Like, oh, I have to go to sports study hall. And if you didn't go to sports study hall, you couldn't play the games and you couldn't participate in practice. It was like part of the team regiment. Like, the bell would ring at 2.15 and by 2.25 you had to be seated in either the library or the cafeteria with your, the rest of your team and be quiet and do your homework for 45 minutes. And we would have to go to the sports locker rooms after and change for practice or the game. If we had an away game, we had to load on the bus at a certain time. Anyway, it worked out better for sports people, <laughs> but not for people like me who, who hate getting up. I just hate my time being like wasted for going here and I just was like this is such an annoying annoyingly long bus ride and if my dad would just drive me to school I would be there in like 20 minutes <laughs> but you know my dad he was a painter and he couldn't go to clients houses that early in the morning to paint so could have drove me to school so I was super annoyed and Bonnie um my stepmom she worked for an office at the time so she was always like 
I skipped school a lot. Sometimes I would just pretend I'd get off the bus to go to school. Instead of walking into school, I'd turn around and spend the whole day in town because I lived in the sticks and there was nothing to do. And then just get back on the bus at the end of the day like I was there all day. Get home, erase the messages on the answer machine so they didn't even know I skipped that day. Yeah, it was easy back then. You just can't do it too many days in a row or else then they start calling. <laughs> I'm do this gold. Learned that the hard way. I skipped like three days in a row and they called around dinner time. Like switched it up on me. I don't. I don't know how they did that because there's. Well, I guess. You know they had sports in the school until like five something. So someone could have been in the office, but it's like, damn, tricky motherfuckers. <laughs> and then they started sending letters home, and most of the time I would get the letters out of the mailbox before my parents got home and just be like toss it in the trash because they weren't as vigilant with children as they are now. They figured parents were busy, and as long as it wasn't life or death, they figured that the parents knew about it and they were handling it. <laughs> no, the kids were just throwing it in the trash, and the parents said no shit, and hence why they're crazy with it now. <laughs> we ruined it for these kids. By the way, this is another wet and wild. I think they're usually around 2 $3. They have all different colors. I have a double one and then I have a single one. I use these a lot. I also use my LA Shimmer a lot. This was only like three bucks. As you can tell, I have two of the same ones when they're on sale and I like it. I use it a lot. I <laughs> buy two. Just don't open two. One's still sealed. Alright, we're getting there. I got the nice golds building our level now we need to start getting darker and I'm playing with some ideas also putting away what I don't need anymore so I have this, this is from wet and wild I've had it forever and that's why it's rubbed off but there's some really deep browns in here I like to use for the corner but I'm looking at these pretty like reddish browns right here. We're going with this in the corner. Give it a little more of a red than a brown today, I guess. Ooh, see all that extra on my face? Oh, it's going to be a nasty cleanup. Again, I'm going to straighten this all out. So don't be afraid to go a little bit off your eye just to get it in there good. All this mess we will clean up. <laughs> Alright, in the corner again. Remember, I like to try to do it as at an angle. You don't have to. Play with your face shape, what works for you. Might not work for me, we all got different shaped faces and eyes. You could even do half, half and half. <laughs> Instead of just doing the corners if you wanted to. There's no right or wrong way, just play. Just play. That's what I say. Every day I'm like, hmm. I kind of have an idea, but I kind of don't. At the same time, make it up as I go. Keeps it fresh. <laughs> you don't get bored as easy. Again, I'm going to clean all this shit up. So it looks a little crazy right now. So I'm going to make sure I'm coming up even in tones and shape and how far you're going in. Next, we're doing the glitter right over top. Yes, yes. You know I love my shimmer. So stuffed up today. I think it's because it's windy. It's like making it dusty or something. Whatever, I'll take it. It's not snowing. The 
this needs to contrast. The crease matches the lid too much. What are we going to do about this? Darken it. <laughs> going back to my double wet and wild one. It's dark ass brown here, almost black. Anyway, so all this prep time is for prom is what I remember more than my actual prom. Because my date and my friends and I, we only ended up staying at prom for about an hour and a half. They were more interested in the after party. I got one dance with my date, didn't take a picture. It was very narcissistic. Like, didn't even realize that it was, like, a big event for me. Like, the other couple, they took time to go up and take a picture, but my boyfriend just didn't want to do that. Then I always end up with, like, selfish jerks. The only pictures I have of prom are in front of um, my dad's fireplace, which we were remodeling. <laughs> it was just not a good place to stand because it wasn't finished. It was like a sketchy background because my date wouldn't, didn't want to deal with the line or the wait. Didn't want to stay and dance. Just wanted to go get drunk and get his tux off pretty much. So all, I spent all this money and time getting ready and majority of my prom night was in a fucking house party walking around with my hair and makeup done and this beautiful dress potting a little bit because I was sad that we were missing the big show. <laughs> I was sad that day but I told my mom, you know, of course, oh yeah, we had a great time. I did tell her that we didn't get pictures. Said the line was just too line up too long all night made excuses she was sad about it she wanted to have them you know for a keepsake I didn't have the heart to tell her that then I didn't have a spine and I should have said listen motherfucker my parents paid a lot of money for this and they want a picture for my goddamn scrapbook so get your candy ass up there smile pretty and let's do this my mom took a day off <laughs> that's what I wanted to say but and stick up for myself back then. <laughs> now I've been like, um, like, it's prom, so why'd you even come? If you don't want to be here, if you don't want to dance, if you don't want to get your fucking picture taken, you know what I mean? Bring a flask like the rest of the goddamn kids. You're just lazy and inventive. <laughs> It was weird how that relationship ended. It was like so intense. We were like, thought we were in love. Like, we're gonna go up and get married and blah, blah. And just as quickly as it started, I literally just, t I wrote a letter. I got fed up with the selfish behavior and always like doing his stuff. And I was just like, I'm sick of it. Like, not a fucking pin cushion, pretty much. And I'm not, like, your Barbie doll. And he didn't really like that. And so he stopped talking to me, too. And so we just went from talking every day and being best friends to literally not speaking, not looking at each other, passing each other in the hall like the other one didn't exist. <laughs> that was my first love right there. Beginning of a series of shitty men. <laughs> like, <laughs> to me, that was normal. That's how people got treated. Like, now I know better. But look, looking back, like, I'm sure you feel that way too about certain shit in your life as a kid. Like, why? It was so stupid.
we were all stupid. I guess that's the point, because we're young and naive, and you gotta learn the hard way, right? I do have funny memories of that night, like, uh, since I mentioned we were in the sticks, guys, one of the kids, uh, parents, you know, had a very successful, I think it's a dairy farm, very successful farm, very proud of it, works hard, and like, when, I'm sure this kid was the type of kid that got up before school, or, like, had to take care of farm work before they went to school, like, really hard-working family, um, again, very proud to be farmers, and I was more of, like, city-raised, I mean, I, I did come from a very small town that my grandparents built, but we don't have farms in that town, <laughs> like, we're still close to, like, city stuff, we're more like a suburb than a country, so anyway, um, he drove one of his really big, expensive, elite tractors to prom with his date in it, which I thought was unique. I'm like, well, at first I was laughing, like, who drives a tractor to prom? That poor girl had to get out of that big-ass tractor in her pretty dress, and, you know, they didn't exactly clean all the mud off the fucking tractor. <laughs> Men. You know, they're like, oh. I think my tractor's sexy. <laughs> really turns us on. I don't know about me, but I laughed. It was a, a moment, and I remember that. Just being there, like this total city kid, like, are you fucking kidding me? Like a judgmental little asshole, like, you drove your fucking tractor to prom. You're in formal attire, and your tractor has poop on it. <laughs> like, I didn't say it out loud, but that's what I was thinking. But at the same time, I'm like, go you, little different kid. You know, he was teased a lot by the, the jocks, which unfortunately I was around a lot because I was uh, in sports. Although I did have a lot of friends and a lot. I didn't, like, have one type of friend. <laughs> I just went to all the groups. I was a floater. But the jocks, you know, couldn't mingle with the less cool kids. So he did get teased, so, you know, it was ballsy for him to do that, which I gave him credit for. I even said, I'm like, I like your tractor. <laughs> he just made it a point to, like, in front of the jocks, like, at least he's different and ballsy. Fucking sheeps following the crown sheep. <laughs> I had a picture about me show that I didn't like bullies. I still don't. Agree with you or not. Just because you are different and you like different things, if you got bullied, I would literally turn around and be like, why don't you shut the fuck up? You're clearly jealous of what they got or what they're doing. Why don't you just focus on your fucking self? <laughs> that was me. Like, <laughs> I don't care if we were in the middle of the classroom. You know those fucking asshole bullies? You know, like, sit behind someone, start kicking the seat. I'm like, oh, you're going to do my homework today, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> have we met? You're about to meet me. I don't care if I'm in a new fucking school. <laughs> so my first month of school was interesting. Because there was a lot of, um, I mean, I don't want to single out football. But a lot of football kids that had people doing their homework for them because if you didn't pass, if you didn't keep a certain GPA, you couldn't play. And I don't know about most schools, but up here in the north, teachers don't play that fucking game. I don't care if you're the star fucking quarterback. You have to do your work. If you don't pass tests, they go right to your coach. Like, listen, your player is fucking up. Not doing the homework, not passing tests. I don't think they can. Like, this school was hardcore. Like, they made education. Like, it was annoying as a kid, but at the same time, I'm still a little impressed. They were ahead of the game. They weren't so great with their skipping policies and their school officer. No offense to overweight people, but was like 300 pounds and we could outrun him in two seconds. And he never caught us. And he couldn't. You know, sometimes not make out whose face it was. We would have our hoods up. 
we just run out of school knowing that he couldn't catch us and climb the fence. And as long as our face was covered, we didn't get suspension because they couldn't tell who it, who it was. Didn't have cameras in the school just yet. And then they got smart and they hired this uh, female rookie cop. She was like in her first year. So although she was young and trained, she still was very green. And she was pretty young, so she did try to like be cool with the kids and got us to listen more than the other officer. But she was fast. I was like, shit, cannot run this one so easily. She pulled me right off the fence once. It's like halfway up, she got my foot. I'm like, damn it. So close to my freedom. <laughs> Good job, though. <laughs> she was pretty fast. <laughs> Again, all memories I laugh about now, but at the time, like, this isn't something to brag about. Like, I was a little shit. Like, go to class. Like, stop being a dick. Respect your elders. <laughs> That's what I just want to say to my young self. But at the time, I was like, rage against the machine. Let's go get the f out of here. This place sucks. <laughs> that was my attitude at the time. No, I don't want to conform to your classrooms all day. I hated it. It was the worst. And school suspension was the worst. <laughs> I remember I got ISS, which means pretty much I got caught skipping. So their punishment was you still have to come to school, but you can't go to any of your classrooms, and you have to sit in this one room, and your teacher brings down work for you to do all day, and you have to get it done by the end of the day. You can't talk to anyone. Um, at lunchtime, you go and get your lunch tray, and you come back, and you have to do this in front of the whole school. So your whole class knows Every day, who's in ISS because at lunchtime, we got walked in there like fucking prisoners. We had to wait for everybody to get their lunch. And we were the last ones in, and they knew they couldn't talk to us, and the teachers were like prison guards. Like, you were on display. They figured public shaming was part of the, the pull of not getting caught. Me? I didn't give a fuck. I walked in there like a celebrity. I'm like, hey guys, I got ISS again. It was a good day, though. I got the fuck out of this place for a while. How's your day going? And they'd be like, shh, stop talking. Keep moving. And I'm like, excuse me, Hitler's behind me. I gotta go. It's fucking Stalingrad or whatever. And I would get in more trouble for making comments like that. <laughs> I'm just painting the picture of I was completely different. I was not a blast in a glass. I was a little shit face, and I wouldn't have wanted to doubt with me. But... If you were a cool teacher and genuinely treated the kids with respect, I was nice. I listened. I did do my schoolwork for the most part when I didn't feel like failing. But there was a year or two there where I just stopped giving a shit. I was dealing with some mental health shit and trauma. I think I got like an 18 in my math class once. And I really had to try for that 18. <laughs> That's like not going to class at all. Like not doing a single homework assignment. Not taking a single test. It's hard work to miss that much. I don't know. Maybe it was like an act for attention. Because kids do weird shit like that. Like if I get a really low grade parents are gonna be pissed and ha ha to them like why do we do shit like that I don't know I don't know what I was thinking I don't remember it just assuming because I was more than capable of being a straight A student all the time I was just lazy I didn't want to put in the effort I didn't care I didn't believe in myself I was angry just wanted to you know, hang out with my friends, sneak alcohol or sneak weed, and just hang out and listen to music. That was my life. <laughs> but I think every teenager goes through that, or at least in your first year of college. At least I got it out of my system when I was young. Because when I did go to college, I was very focused took it very seriously. I also waited until I was ready. I didn't go right for
from high school to college. My mom and dad are very different in their styles of parenting. Like my mom was very supportive of the fact that uh, taking a gap year, figuring, she always said, figure out what you want to do first before you go to school or else you're just going to waste a, a bunch of time and a bunch of money, which I oh, hiccup, still support and stand by today. I still feel like that is the responsible thing to do. Unless, like, you graduate knowing, like, it, um, my sister Hannah graduated knowing right away she wanted to be a nurse. And, you know, of course my mom helped her get her into nursing school and pushed her to do that. Hannah's always gotten good grades, so, like, it's different. But my mom understood with me that I didn't really, I had very big dreams, and I'm very creative, and I've always uh, just done things my own way. So th she just knew the traditional route wasn't going to be for me, and I was struggling at that time, and she just didn't think I was emotionally ready for college and she was right I was dealing with some shit up here and I just needed to vent it out so I could focus mother's no best but my dad you know he is very traditional he really wanted us to go like he just wants us to make good money and love our job and have a good life and he was afraid that if we didn't go to school right away we just never would and majority of us that's what kind of happened but you know the traditional route isn't going to work for every kid but I do respect my dad for always you know do something like you gotta go to school like he it would be annoying but at the same time it would like you knew he cared <laughs> annoying as it was oh my god these pop-ups there's still times where I'm like, my dad still gives me that, what's your plan? What are you doing with your life? Are you making enough money? You need to get a new job. You need to worry about your retirement. Like all the things we don't want to hear, but because he's our dad, <laughs> because he feels like he isn't going to be here forever, he just... It comes across nagging, but I think he's just, he's a worry work, my dad worries about things he cannot control which I get from him I feel like every every human does this to some extent my dad's just a very nervous worry worrisome person and he's fiercely protective because he's an Aries so my dad you know worries about what's gonna happen when we're gone who's gonna help us so things that are probably keep him up at night and he's like next time I see him I gotta tell him this advice because I feel like nobody ever told me that or if I don't tell him they're gonna go to, like so I feel like a lot of the time when we actually see him because we don't see him all the time my dad's very busy we're very busy and we're older but he just all those things he sits around worrying about comes up so for the first few minutes it's my dad asking questions. How's work? You saving money? What do you got going on here? But it's not because he's like being nosy. He's just being a dad. He, my dad's the tough one. My mom's the more passive, free spirit. And my dad is very, needs to be structured and have a plan and check all the boxes. So they're very different parenting styles. Have you noticed that about your parents now that you're older? And if you have, talk to me in the comments about the difference that you like about each one. Because I think when we think about stuff like this, it will just make us better parents to our kids. Like, I think about all the times like I hear my friends say that they wished their dad, you know, nagged them or was up their butt about something or was overly strict because, you know, their dad just wasn't around. And there was times when my dad wasn't around when he was younger. I did express that my parents were very, very young parents. My mom was pregnant at her high school graduation. So my dad 
is also a rebel like me, Rage Against the Machine, and he wanted to get out of here and see the world. At the same time, wanted to do right by their kids, and the parenting styles clash. They're very different people. They're also both very feisty fire signs. <laughs> so, I just feel like it was doomed. Neither of my parents, either of them, wanted to get married either. They loved each other. They had a lot of respect for each other. They were high school sweethearts, but um, they were forced by their parents because that's how you did things back then to do right by the woman was to marry them and not dishonor them by having babies out of wedlock so he graduated high school and had a shotgun wedding that neither of them wanted and or were ready for so Mom, super pregnant. I forgot to fuck that up. Newly married. My dad decides that he's going to try his hand at life in Colorado. And he's going to go down there and get established and send for my mom when he finds a place and gets a job. So he goes out there. My mom's getting bigger. He's not working fast enough so my mom decides to go down there with her super pregnant belly and uh, my sister my older sister Lorraine is the only one of us who is born outside of New York she was born in Colorado where her my dad and mom ended up trying to make the go at their life again they're like my mom's like 18 at this point my dad's like I don't know 19 or 20 he's a little bit older than my mom I think a year a year older, two, something like that. But, um, so they're very young. My mom's working, has a baby out there. It's just too much. They end up coming back and living with my dad's parents, um, which are super close with my mom. Uh, my, my grandma always loved my mom. She still talked to her all the time. My mom would come in and, and sit down. And my mom cleaned her house. Like, they always stayed close. They always respected my mom. She was always a hard worker, and they did that for everyone. Like, um, my Uncle Mark divorced as well. Um, we're all very close with, I mean, not super close anymore. We haven't seen her. We see her at, like, weddings or around town, and we'll stop and talk to her. But she doesn't come to, like, family events like my mom because my uncle and her relationship is very different. Um, like, my uncle got mad at my cousin for inviting her well I don't think he got mad I don't think he made a big deal about it but I, I think you could tell he was a little butthurt that my cousin invited his first wife to her wedding but that's her aunt you know what I mean so it's a different relationship between them but my mom you know all my cousins love my mom they like hug her. That was like their second mom. Like every single one of my cousins on my dad's side. Hi, Joe. <laughs> they love her. She's been a staple. Like my cousin lived with us when we were little. Like my mom just stayed close because she lived with them and she grew up with them. She was friends with Linda and Kathy. And, you know, I don't think she was super close with my uncles, but, you know, they lived in the house together. She became more family than wife. You know what I mean? And she gave my grandparents three grandbabies. And the first grandbaby of all, like the first grandbaby my grandparents ever had came from my mom, which was my sister, Lorraine. And then my brother, Ricky. Well, no. My sister, Lorraine, my cousin, Keely, my brother, Ricky, my cousin, Brandon, me, my cousin, Jenny. Like, my mom always led the baby race, <laughs> which my grandma loved. And my mom made it a point for all of us to be close. Like, my grandma died last year, and I was devastated. Like, I was there every Christmas, every birthday. Like, my mom insisted that we be close with that family and our dad because she was close with them, so... It's a little different of a relationship. Anyway, I need to go rub these errands and walk my baby so I can get back here and do some readings for you. I really think I'm going to do a pick pile today because I haven't done one in a while. They take some time. I have the house to myself and I have some time. So I think I'm going to do 
uh, either a pick a pile for love or a pick a pile to see his loved one and then just some random ratings so I'm gonna do more than one I'm not sure what time we'll start filming I'm gonna walk my dog run my errands get some food vibe out just chill for a little bit and then when I'm in the mood I will be live <laughs> for you but I hope you like this look um, it's a little bit more subtle of the browner cat eye I usually make this look like a darker color but I do like the red it softens it a bit looks nice with the lipstick I'm playing with um, colors a lot of browns and golds because obviously it it does darken it makes my uh, eyes more caramel chocolate when I wear browns when I wear greens or like pinks my eyes are more green is that weird do your eyes change when you put makeup on like they look really brown today oh I guess look a little green but for the most part they're darker the darker my eye the darker my pupils get the lighter my eye the more green they are <laughs> I'm trying to watch my eyes I feel like they're mood mood rings so I get mad I feel like sometimes they get dark chocolate like vampire like I am gonna rip your face <laughs> or when you wear stuff like this it brings out the brown but I just have a more brown in my eye than green I think they change all the time what color are they are they green or brown I can't tell weird eyeballs do you look at your eyeballs like this Maybe I'm vain. I hope not. I've just been noticing that my eyeballs change color all the time, and I don't think that's normal. <laughs> what if I'm like a mutant? Isn't there isn't there a real mutation if you have like one eye a different color? That's a real genetic mutation. There's like a name for it. So technically, if you have two different color eyes, you are an X-Men mutant. <laughs> Go you. Anyway, I love you all. See you soon. Bye.